Now, two of my favorite watch brands from Germany that have just had a large impact and progression of my taste are Nomos and Junghans. Now, two of these brands are really known for their more contemporary approach to design and utilizing principles from the Baja School of Design. Now, with the linkage in their influence kind of being shared, there's many collectors that I think just develop an affinity to their styles. And then they kind of get confronted with this idea, like which watch is better suited for them and why? So in this video, we're gonna look at three primary points. First, examining a point of design influence of both of these brands then moving into a detailed comparison of both of these leading models from uh, these respected manufacturers. And then finally, at the end, just some closing thoughts, which watch is better for which type of individual, and maybe just some points of consideration when looking in the direction of these two manufacturers. But guys, let's jump into the video, take a closer look at these two watches. So to begin with looking at both of these manufacturers, I think it's important to understand the backstory of them in order to really demonstrate where the direct parallels fall and then where they diverge from a shared focus. Now with both of these manufacturers descending from Germany, there are certainly going to be some shared elements, especially when looking at these dials straight on, but their inceptions began at two very different periods. With Scramberg-based Junghans being founded in 1861 with a history of many twists and turns, just given the cultural roller coaster, for lack of a better term, of Germany in the century and a half since their start. And then on the other hand, you have Nomos Glasuta being a young company, relatively speaking for watches that that is, uh, that was founded just in 1990 and has quickly gained ground as the largest manufacturer in Germany by total output of production and has amassed a collection of their own in-house calibers to add on top of that. Yet despite the disconnection of years between their launches as brands, they share a common point of influence from the Baja School of Design and the predecessor to that movement with the Deutsche Werkbund. Now the idea of Baja is one of those terms that does get thrown around quite loosely at times. I've been guilty of this, but in the short 14 year existence of the Baja School from 1919 to 1933, the school managed to establish not only an anomalous approach to design, but way of life to the overly traditional norms being clung onto by German nationals of the period. So the principles of Baja certainly battled the status quo, but also it did it with some underlying purpose to fuse individual expression on one side with function through a framework that did not obfuscate individualism even through the intended enhancement of the possibility of mass production. Now, by developing a workspace that encouraged craftsmen as well as artists and designers to collaborate together, the influence of the school was carried far beyond the time the school was forced to close its doors with the help of alumni and its adoption by nearly all aspects of contemporary design as well as industrial design with its impact being felt in the typeface of some of your favorite brands, the chair that maybe you're sitting on, or the device that you're watching this video on right now. One of those graduates that had a heavily influence on the world of watchmaking, and particularly Junghans, was Swiss designer Max Bill. Now, Max Bill was originally commissioned by Junghans during the 1950s to create wall clocks for the brand and followed up on their success in the 1960s with adopting his designs to that of a wristwatch, a design that now has become synonymous with the brand and will serve as our point of reference for this review. Now, on the other end, Nomos was a brand that arose in the year 1990, and this was a period notable in Germany, especially given the fall of the Berlin Wall just prior to this. And this really helped usher in a heightened embrace of individual expression of the culture. And Nomos in many ways followed this momentum and adoption in an approach to design that both looks back towards the early principles of Bauhaus in a really contemporary form as exemplified by this Orion here. Now in this video, we're gonna be looking at both of the 38 millimeter options of these watches. Of course, a look at some of the details, things to consider at the end. Also, if you're liking what you're seeing from these watches today, we are a full authorized dealer at teddybaldasar.com. So we'll leave links in the description down below if you are in the market for them. Full authorized dealer of the brand as well as full factory warranty. So you're completely covered there, teddybaldasar.com. Starting off with a conversation on the wearability of these two German dress watches, we have a set of smaller dimensions in both cases that are similar in diameter. 
However, that doesn't really tell the entire story here. Starting with the Junghans, we have the signature 38 millimeter diameter paired with a set of very short lugs for that diameter, which also are neatly tucked up against the case, equaling out to a lug to lug distance of just 40 millimeters, making for an excellent under the radar dress watch wearing experience, which I think can be worn in casual environments as well as in more dressy environments. Like other Maxfield designs, this almost total lack of a bezel and angle to the dial design ensures that this watch still has a presence on the wrist despite its overall smaller dimensions. And even with that automatic ETA 2824 within and a highly domed acrylic crystal, the case thickness is just a svelte 9.8 millimeters that should slide underneath pretty much every dress cuff. Also, I do want to mention that there are sapphire versions of this actual crystal available. We also have sapphire retrofitting on our site. So just want to put that in as a side note. We'll talk a bit more about that in a bit when looking at the dials. In terms of finishing, the Max Bill is polished pretty much everywhere you look on its saucer-like case that works cohesively with the other design elements. Now along the three o'clock side of the case, it comes with a push-pull unsigned crown that operates in a typical fashion. Moving over to the Snowmos Orion on the wrist, it's important to know that we are taking a look at the 38 millimeter variant of this watch as opposed to the also available 33 and 35 millimeter and coming in a variety of Neomatic versions as well. Now with the 38 millimeter Nomos Orion, we have a case that despite the 38 millimeter diameter feels substantially larger than that of the Max Bill. Like the Junghans, we again have a very narrow bezel that aids in the perception of the visual size, but the lug to lug of this 47.6 millimeters is the main reason for its larger presence. Now this is a distinctive lug design and offers an unparalleled silhouette that is easy to recognize from Nomos in nicely contrast with the arguably most restrained design Nomos has in the Orion. Aiding in keeping the wear slim on the wrist, we have an impressive 7.9 millimeters in thickness here. And this is enabled by that thinner Nomos Alpha Manual caliber we'll get to in a bit. As far as finishing, the Orion is like the Max Bill, polished all over with elongated slender lugs and an overall curved presentation that does feel a step up from Junghans as you would kind of hope for for the price. Another highlight is the exhibition case back on this one. So this is coming in both a sapphire as well as a stainless steel back. But given the alpha manual, just being probably one of the best looking movements available under $3,000, I think it's definitely worth it to go for the exhibition case back, but is a notable jump in price if you didn't wanna go that direction. However, cases aside for a moment, considering that these two brands are commonly known first and foremost for their design language, the dials definitely need to be a highlight in this comparison. With the Junghans Max Bill, it is important to remember its origins from wall clocks and being a pioneer in mid 20th century design. Now with understanding that, I think you begin to see how the valued elements of a wall clock are still present here with a watch meant to be worn on the wrist. Here we have a clean silver surface set with easily distinguished numerals to point out the hours and corresponding line markers to assist even further with telling the time. Also the use of lines and experimenting with typography were some of the just the key principles of Bauhaus design in general. And they are on full display here in this instance. I absolutely just love the numerals chosen on this watch. One smaller point that I've just always noticed with Junghans as well, primarily with the Max Bill, honestly, is how the edge of the dial tucks backward and kind of makes the, I don't know, it just makes you kind of really pull in. It's more striking, pulling in the viewer. And it's a trait that was probably adopted as a result of the wall clock influence now that you're kind of tying these things together. And when combining this effect with the crystal, it really does create a eye-catching effect. And in this case, this is a plexiglass crystal kind of matching the original as well as, you know, helping with that legibility and kind of having that vintage hue. But if you did want a sapphire version, those are available as well. And Junghans did a pretty good job in matching those acrylics with their sapphires. At the center, we have pencil style hands featuring loom to match these small dots of loom at the dial's quarter hour marks, which adds a bit of utility without sacrificing the elegance of the piece in general. In the world of watch dials, this is one of the simplest dials out there. However, it finds completeness through absence rather than feeling deficient. And I think that's one of the best things about the Max Bill. Now, while the Max Bill appeals to a mid 20th century approach, the Orion is a bit more contemporary while still upholding a healthy sense of minimalism of utilizing omittance as an asset. Now in its execution, there are noticeable steps up in finish that are certainly apparent with applied golden hour markers, tempered blue hands with the sub seconds at the six, done with a fine circular finish, 
only fully appreciated when getting very close, especially here with this macro lens. Many of the same shared attributes of the Max Bill are here, legible markings that are nondescript doing their job, a less pronounced dome crystal, but a dome crystal nevertheless, a balance in its use of space, and a unique take on typography that of course feels familiar given its inclusion on Nomos's pieces. Now it's hard to declare a true winner here in the area of the dial given both are approaching their execution slightly differently. However, the movements within these watches are probably going to be the number one point of differentiating these two from one another and is going to be the main reason for the price jump of the Nomos compared to the Junghans watch. To follow the traditional order so far, the Junghans operates with a straightforward third-party caliber, the most ubiquitous one that you can find with the Eta 2824. It's perhaps the most respected workhorse watch caliber out there on the market today. And if you're interested, I covered basically all the third-party movements, including this Eta 2824 in a recent video, kind of just giving a lay of the land of all the third-party movements out there. While it's nothing sexy and lives under a closed case back, the Eta 2824 is frankly never a bad choice and is a principal reason for the accessible price point of this Junghans Max Bill. It offers peace of mind through its serviceability and regulation, while also having decades old of a track record in the market to offer really proof to its acclaim. In terms of specs, we're looking at a 28,800 vibration per hour beat rate, four hertz, hacking and hand winding, so hacking, stopping the second hand when pulling out the crown to the farthest position, and has a power reserve of 38 hours. One point of emphasis though, this one does have a go state, which is a little strange. So when you pull out the crown to the second position, it will have at least the activation of as if you were changing the date, but there is actually no date window on this variant. So a little bit weird, doesn't actually affect the wear at all, but uh, could be confusing for some people. Now being an automatic watch, you could maybe frame an argument for how the Junghans is say more practical in some respects compared to the Nomos, but it's important to understand the full context around the Alpha Manual again, as it is really a fantastic movement and a huge just accomplishment in Nomos is just short but impressive history. Before 2005, a watch like this from Nomos would have had utilized a Pazoo 7001. It's a well-regulated ETA made handwound caliber that has been around for 40 plus years. However, in recent time, Eta's supply became an increasing issue for brands like the size of Nomos, considering their production volume and tendency of Eta just to simply kind of just run out of production with sometimes not the fairest of warning. Now with this in mind, Noma set out to produce their own calibers inspired by the design of the Pazoo 7001 being produced in-house by Nomos themselves. Now, apart from its accomplishment, it does come with an incredibly slim 2.6 millimeters in thickness, helping to achieve its thin case with 17 jewels, glassuta waves across the surface, blued screws, and perlage finishing on the main plate. Now, the Alpha Manual comes in with a 21,600 vibration per hour beat rate, three hertz, features hacking and hand winding, and has a power reserve of 43 hours. Now when looking at the Alpha Manual caliber, of course it is going to be inspired by a Pazoo 7001, but what this movement really meant for Nomos was a ton. I mean, it really opened the floodgates for them to produce now well over a dozen in-house calibers and doing incredibly impressive things in that world as well. And from a finishing standpoint, I think this is one of the best looking movements you're gonna find for under $3,000. We saw Tudor unveil those uh, Black Bay 58s with their movements on display. Looking at this movement compared to that, and this isn't even the DUW movements that Nomos makes. This thing looks absolutely great for the money. All right, so now that we've looked at both of these pieces, let's look at some general just things to consider. So when I look at Junghans versus Nomos and why I tried to talk about the Bajas influence of two of these pieces, I think there are many shared principles and understanding of where they arise uh, that allows these two to be similar, but also very different. For Junghans, it's a brand that's been around since the 19th century, of course, and has changed quite a bit. But the Max Bill, I think very much personifies the brand and where it currently sits, arising from that mid 20th century form of Bajas design. And with that, you're going to have a window into this brand that is very different than that of Nomos, which is much more contemporary and where it rose up in terms of its growth as a brand, very different period for the country in which it occupies, as well as just a different approach in terms of its overall uh, direction towards its influence of Bauhaus. With that being considered, I don't think you necessarily consider both of these watches as completely the same. 
When I look at Jung Hans, I look at mid 20th century design. I see that influence from the wall clock. It's minimalism as a pursuit, not minimalism as absence of thought. And the same thing could be said for Nomos and its use of just lines and open space and how it's executed. But I love how both of these watches do kind of go against the grain in many ways. Maybe not as much nowadays just because they're a lot of just influence in industrial design where some people might see these as kind of plain or sterile in terms of their approach, but I don't see it as that at all. And I think if you kind of dig a little bit deeper into these brands, I think you can have that type of appreciation. In terms of looking at them side by side, which one is best for which type of individual? I don't think price should be the main consideration because again, the designs are very different in what they're going for. Mid 20th century versus more kind of modern avant-garde with the lugs and everything about the Orion. I see them as more apples and oranges and they see them apples to apples, despite many people asking, which one should I go for? Of course, price is going to be a limiting factor, but if you want to get into true Bajas design, I think Jung Hans, of course, is going to be a little bit more pure to that. If you want something a bit more contemporary, I would certainly go for the Nomos Orion, as well as maybe some of their other dress watches uh, that might have a different uh, just approach to it uh, with subtle differences. I think for wearability, they both wear a little bit larger for kind of some different reasons. For Jung Hans, it's more of that heavily domed crystal, thin bezel, Nomos, a lot of those shared attributes there, but also on top of that, you have those very long, striking lugs on this. In terms of which one to go for, 35, 38, that's really gonna come down to you. I think 38 is gonna be good for, I would say, more people out there, honestly. If you're a smaller wrist individual, like just more classic wear of a dress piece and you wanna have this be more of a dress watch, 35 is probably gonna be a better choice for you. But I like both of these watches. They kind of walk that line of casual, versus dressy and i think that's great for a modern context and then finally what is the reason for the price increase i think it became pretty apparent the finishing on the nomos is going to be elevated you are getting a nice return on that if you are looking at the details of the actual dial surface you got applied markers the fine finish within the sub dial and of course the movement that's going to be the main reason why the price difference here whether or not you think it's actually worth it that's up to you but i don't think it's a matter of saving money in this case i don't think it's a matter of just looking at both of these as the same thing they both do a great job and if you understand the ethos of what Bauhaus was all about it's about going against the grain collecting different ideas and i think both of these kind of do that in different ways no most arise from the 1990s when german culture was changing so much follow the Berlin Wall, and it really was about going against the traditional norms and kind of following that pursuit. And in terms of Jung Hans, of course, being very true to traditional Bauhaus, having a Max Bill actually designing this piece, you can't really get more Bauhaus than that. And when adapting from a wall clock to a wristwatch, there's just a lot of the elements going against the grain, being unique, using minimalism as a pursuit rather than absence of thought, using space as an actual tool in an actual design. I think it all is here and I love these watches and I think they're great windows into this world of casual and dressy watches in 2021 still. But all right guys, I'd love to see your comments down below. Which one of these two watches would you go for and why? Please leave comments, love to see them down there. Also, if you did enjoy this video, thumbs up, subscribe and hit the bell icon. Really do enjoy both of these watches and if you do like them, I will have links down below to purchase these watches on teddyballs.com. Uh, full authorized dealer, full factory warranty. You're completely covered. Anything goes wrong, full peace of mind when going in the direction. And also allows us to make this content all possible. Also, if you wanna stay up to date with giveaways as well as uh, just stay up to date with the content, of course, subscribe here, hit that bell icon, but also follow me on Instagram. Have some cool photos and watches going on out there as well. But guys, thank you again so much for watching. Be well, and I'll see you all very soon.